What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life. Coming at you on YouTube and today I've got a video from wrestling with myself. Uh, impromptu quick video, just wanted to pop on here really quick and talk about yesterday's WWE cuts. We got surprised yesterday with six people that WWE let go. And uh, there's been a lot of rumors as to why. Um, some of these cuts were very sudden. Uh, they had a big string of cuts last year. And then on the anniversary, pretty much, of that this year, they had another big string of cuts a few months ago that were a lot of the undercard, kind of uh, undebuted talent, a lot of underused people, people that were asking for their releases, stuff like that. And so we didn't expect probably to see any more big cuts this year. But with Nick Khan taking over as president and all the impending rumors of potential sales going to Fox, going to Disney, going to wherever... Um, we've seen WWE, in spite of having record profits, all-time high record profits, cutting a lot of people, cutting a lot of the fat, trying to slim down their expenses to make even more money to make a potential feasible sale down the road. Now, while I don't know if that's going to happen or not, uh, we've heard a lot about it, but there were six cuts yesterday, and a lot of these are pretty surprising because they were bigger names, they were names that were on TV, that were starting to get pushes, uh, people that you didn't expect to see cuts. Now... Thankfully, there is a wrestling landscape to go to, and uh, we saw this happen a lot last year, where Anderson and Gallows went to Impact. Um, we saw Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder go to Impact. We saw some bigger names get out of their contracts, uh, like Brody Lee, Matt Hardy, FTR, uh, Rusev, who was fired, all go to AEW. Um, we saw EC3 go to Ring of Honor. We saw uh, Mike Bennett go back to Ring of Honor. So last year, we saw a lot of talents um, wind up making the most of their situation and finding other places to go. And right now, there is a nice, rich tapestry of talent that is sitting there um, from a couple of these different cuts. We have, for example, Daniel Bryan, whose contract ran out, who's not signed anywhere right now. We have Samoa Joe. Um, injury history notwithstanding, Samoa Joe is a big main event name for somebody who's sitting out there right now when the 90-day uh, no-compete clause is gone. We have Andrade, who's sitting there right now, who's already doing stuff for AAA. We have Kalisto, who's likely going to do some stuff for AAA and possibly even in the States. So there are names out there right now that are waiting for contracts, and there are six more names here that are going to join them. So I wanted to bring you guys um, my quick thoughts on where these six people could go and what it means for other companies. Um, Braun Strowman is the first cut, and this one surprised a lot of people. He was in a big match at WrestleMania where he fought Shane McMahon. He threw Shane off a cage and won a WrestleMania match against Shane. And then he was in the main event of last month's pay-per-view backlash. He, he fought in the main event for the world title in a three-way. So big surprise that Braun was cut. He's a big, beefy guy. He's the kind of guy Vince likes. He's a homegrown creation. So I'm very surprised that the strongman uh, comp competitive winner uh, is not with the company long-term. I thought he was a lifer. Um, now, in terms of where he could go... In the future, this is the hardest one to call. Uh, this is one of those guys you think may not go anywhere else. Um, Braun is not particularly a great promo guy, and he's not particularly a great wrestler. He has improved from his debut with the Wyatt family several years ago to now. He has improved a lot, and he's also gotten in better shape and improved his body as well. He's got a great look, great body, very physical, and he's mildly athletic, but he has gotten better. Um, so you can see that he's working on himself, but he's still, that being said, he's not great at promos or at in-ring stuff. So where does he go right now with the current landscape? Um, he also made those comments last year when uh, the COVID stuff just hit and a bunch of the indie guys were shilling their um, like pro wrestling tees and GoFundMes and stuff like that. Braun made comments saying, hey, go get another job. You know, if, if, if you can't make money in wrestling, go get another job. Kind of crapping on the indies. So he did not do himself any favors now that he's the one uh, potentially seeking employment in the future. Uh, so that's very interesting. I don't think Braun goes anywhere. Um, I've heard AEW, uh, because he's a big name, he was featured on Vince's TV as a main eventer for a long time. I don't see it happening. Um, AEW is bloated too. They have too many guys as it is. They don't have enough TV time. They don't particularly push a lot of their guys consistently week after week anyway. I don't think Braun goes anywhere. Uh, Braun, Braun was making a, a million dollar contract. He was getting reportedly an eight figure contract for Vince. Uh, so he was getting a million dollars. And the only company that I think that can afford him would be AEW. And I don't see them wanting him. 
They've got enough ex Vince guys, their roster's overly full, and Braun doesn't bring a lot to the in-ring style, which is what AEW wants to showcase. He, Ring of Honor can't afford him, NWA can't afford him, although he would fit there, but they have, they, they're on YouTube, they have no money right now. MLW can't afford him, Impact can't afford him. Impact already has enough of their own big guys they've been bringing in recently, like Joe Doring and uh, William Morrissey, Big Cass, and uh, Sawyer Fulton. Impact has a lot of their own big guys already. So I don't see that happening. Maybe New Japan, he can go in and kind of do what some of the 90s guys did, like Vader, Steve Williams, some big guys like that, the Road Warriors. Maybe, if he really wants to, but I don't think he's good enough at wrestling or dedicated enough to wrestling to do that. And with, again, he's a big name with a big body, but his lack of skills, plus his high contract, plus his attitude toward the indies, does not leave him a lot of places to go. So I don't think Braun goes anywhere. I think he either quits wrestling or goes back to Vince under a smaller contract later on down the road. Uh, Alistair Black, another big surprise. He was off TV for six months for no reason. Was starting to get repackaged with a new character. Had new music. Had new t-shirts made. Had been getting vignettes on SmackDown for weeks. Had just come out and cost Big E a match for the IC title and started a new feud. And then he was cut. Uh, so wildly entertaining guy. He's got all the tools. He's a solid talker. He has a great, unique look. He had, he had very cool entrance music, the whole presentation coming up out of the floor, the whole NXT thing. He does this dark brooding character so well. His look, he's long, he's athletic, he's got indie credibility under Tommy End. Um, he's just got all the tools. He's very athletic, he works multiple styles. I think he's going to be an absolute star somewhere. Should have been a star coming out of NXT for the main roster. That was a can't-miss prospect that they missed on, which is uh, just like many, just like Joe, just like Andrade, just like many others. But uh, Alistair Black, Tommy End, is going to be a star somewhere. I don't want to make this an AEW video. Everyone should go to AEW because they have money, the second biggest company. But Alistair Black, uh, I think he belongs there. I think they have to go after him. It's like one of those FTR Miro things where the guy's too talented and too good uh, to not go over there. Uh, my personal idea for what he could do uh, man, if you really want to rehab the Dark Order and, and you want to fix them, obviously if you're bringing more guys in, AEW has to start firing some guys. Their roster's too bloated. They don't have any time to feature people. If you wanted to make the Dark Order a uh, legitimate dark group again, like how it was with Brody Lee, and you wanted to have um, a really visceral kind of cult group, Aleister Black would be a great new leader for that group. Bringing in someone like an Eric Rowan who was cut last year and an Aleister Black and maybe taking a Chris Daniels, who uh, just broke up with Frankie Kazarian after their loss for the tag titles. Uh, maybe turning a Pentagon Jr. against Phoenix, someone like Pentagon, a dark character fits that. All of a sudden now, if you've got a Rowan, a Daniels, a Pentagon, and an Aleister Black, a Tommy End, you've got a awesome dark order. Cut some of the fat there, and you've got a new dark heel group if you want to go that way. But anyway, even just coming in by himself, I think he can be instantly impactful. And Thea Trinidad, uh, who's his uh, girlfriend or wife, I think they're married, um, is a good manager, a good talker, as we saw with Andrade, and a solid wrestler. So she could bring a lot to AEW with him, too, if they come in as a package deal. Um, Buddy Murphy. Uh, this one's not surprising because Murphy was never consistently used um, for, for the last several months. He's another guy they missed the boat on, man. But when they were doing the 205 Live stuff, he was tearing the house down on 205 Live. His feud with Mustafa Ali was incredible. Buddy Murphy is one of the most underrated talents in the world right now. He got himself in killer shape. Uh, he never really got to talk much, so you don't get to hear many of his promos. But his in-ring work is just so good, man. He's one of the, one of the best guys in the ring right now. Um, he's been going for a long time. He had this stuff with Seth Rollins where he was like a disciple of Rollins. Didn't really get used enough in that situation. Broke up with Rollins to go align himself with Rey Mysterio and uh, was hooking up with Rey Mysterio's younger daughter. They dropped that storyline out of nowhere. Then he went back and tried to crawl back to Rollins and he got rejected, so he had nothing to do. They, they just didn't use this guy to his potential. Like I said, I haven't heard him talk much, but he's got a great body. He's a good cruiserweight. He's strong for a smaller guy. He's believable in the ring. His work is phenomenal. Um, I could see a few destinations here. Um, I'm not going to say AEW here because, again, they're bloated. And Buddy Murphy was not used or portrayed on the same level as like FTR, Miro, Matt Hardy, uh, Brody Lee, guys like that. Uh, so I don't think he goes to AEW. The, he'd be a good signing if he did. He would fit in with a lot of those guys. He works that fast-paced style and he's strong. 
he'd be great there. But I would like to see him potentially go to Ring of Honor. Um, I would like some of these names to galvanize together. Just imagine if an MLW or a Ring of Honor, they've already got a solid presentation. They've been around for a long time. Imagine if an if a MLW or Ring of Honor brought in like six or seven of these guys together, whether they're a group or whether they're just staggered entrances. But someone like a Daniel Bryan, a Samoa Joe, um, a Buddy Murphy or an Aleister Black, a Callisto and Andrade, all of a sudden you've got all these named talents who have characters who have been around for a long time who can work all different styles. They can just tear it down. I would love to see Ring of Honor galvanize some star power. Imagine if they got a Tommy End. They'd be great. But I think Buddy Murphy really fits in Ring of Honor. They have a young crop in Ring of Honor right now of really talented dojo students and newer faces like, you know, Brian Johnson, Josh Woods, LSG, Eli Isom. They have a lot of talented people. Um, and they could really use uh, s some some big names to bolster that roster. So I would love to see Buddy Murphy or even a Tommy N go there and just tear it down. But I, I really, um, prediction-wise, I think Buddy Murphy signs with Impact. Impact kind of goes after some of the lower end, uh, presented as lower ender talents. Uh, they, they signed, um, they had EC3 for a little while but didn't sign him. They wound up getting Hawkins and Ryder uh, over there. They just recently signed Big Cass. So they've been signing kind of some of the undercard Vince guys with name value over there. Buddy Murphy is more talented than, than a lot of those guys. Buddy Murphy can really go. Um, I could see him coming in and kind of winning the X Division title, getting a run there, maybe getting a, a push off the card a little bit uh, to show what he can really do. So I would like him to go to Ring of Honor. I, I'm hoping that's where he goes, but I predict impact for Murphy. Then we have three ladies. Ruby Riot is one of them, and Ruby Riot's another one was never used to her potential. When she was Heidi Lovelace on the Indies, she had all the potential in the world. She's got a unique look. She's very athletic. Um, I believe she can talk a little bit. She's got a character with her. I like Ruby Riot a lot. The Riot Squad was inconsistently pushed and then broken up and then reformed and then jobbed out and then broken up again. I don't know what they did with Ruby Riot. She was never used the way she should have been. She was never like a competitor in the singles ranks for any pay-per-view matches or world or women's title matches like she should have been. Um, Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is AEW because they can use more talented U.S. women. They're starting to come around now. They're, they're getting better. Britt Baker is champion now. Thunder Rosa, even though she's not signed. Uh, Serena Deeb. Uh, Ty Conti is great. Um, but but you, you, need, you need some more American ladies to bolster that roster. But again, they're getting pretty full, and they're going to wind up signing a few people uh, outside of this list as well. They've got a lot of ladies under contract. So I'm looking at Impact. I think Impact um, is probably the best destination for ladies right now. They've got a really good underrated roster of ladies, and they always showcase their knockouts very well. So I think Ruby Riot over there could have some really big knockdown dragouts with some of the talent like Deanna Perrazzo, Jordan Grace. They've got uh, Kimberly over there. They've got a ton of very good ladies, and I think she could be one of the best. So I would like to see her. Selfishly, I would love to see what she could do in like an AEW, but again, they're kind of bloated, and they don't always focus on their women's roster. And when they do a lot of times, it's a lot of the Japanese Joshis, which is not my style and doesn't leave a lot of room for the American talent. Uh, so I'm going to say Impact for this, and I think she'll be an underrated signing for them, that she could do a lot for them. And then we have Lana. Uh, Lana, to me, is kind of Braun Strowman-ish. Uh, she's kind of a homegrown product for them. Uh, she's likable. She works hard. But she's been tethered, of course, to Rusev, Miro. Uh, she's married to Miro in real life. They work together in WWE for a long time. I see her going to AEW as Miro's valet. Miro is freshly single now. He's broken up with Kip and Penelope. He just um, turned on Kip recently. So I could see when Kip returns from injury, I could see Kip and Penelope going up against Miro and Penelope getting involved a lot, and Miro saying, well, I've got my own lady to neutralize Penelope, and bringing in Lana. Uh, Lana, again, not a great talker, uh, not not really a great wrestler at all, but she does work hard, she tries, she's just not very um, gifted in the ring, as far as an in-ring wrestler, but she has a great look, she obviously has chemistry with Miro, uh, so I don't see her going anywhere unless she goes to be with Miro in AEW. I don't see her being a wrestler, and pursuing the matches that much, but I could see her being with Miro. In AEW. And finally, an underrated cut, Santana Garrett. Um, Santana Garrett is incredibly athletic. She's marketable. She's beautiful. Uh, she moves around the ring very gracefully. She's innovative. She's got a lot of indie background. Uh, she never really got used in NXT. She had a few matches here and there where she got beat 
Never officially got a call up for a full time NXT run. She got robbed, in my opinion. She's one of the more athletic ladies that I've seen wrestle. Um, I think as far as innovation and just athleticism, Santana can do stuff that not a lot of others can do. And I wish we had gotten to see that on a national stage. But um, there are many destinations for her here. Uh, Ring of Honor is starting a Women of Honor group where they're, they're bringing back their women's division. Santana Garrett fits that perfectly. I would like to see her go there and be one of the uh, staples of the new Women of Honor group they start. Uh, Impact, obviously, again, like I said, with Ruby Riot, they have a lot of underrated, talented ladies. Uh, Santana was there once before as Brittany. I think she managed uh, Sam Shaw, who's now Dexter Loomis. At one point, I think she was involved with uh, a couple like Gunner, a couple other wrestlers, James Storm. Uh, so I could see her going back to Impact and being underrated there. Also, NWA, uh, just doing YouTube stuff right now, but they've got some pretty good ladies and they've lost a lot of ladies and talent over the past year or so. Um, getting signed up by other companies. So um, both Ring of Honor and NWA are both trying to fill in gaps for their women's divisions, and she would fit with either of those. So what do I predict? Um, I'm going to say so Ruby Riot goes to Impact, so I don't think Garrett goes there as well. Uh, I'm going to say Santana Garrett winds up in NWA and makes appearances for Ring of Honor as well, for the Women of Honor stuff. So there, there are six very talented people out here. I could see all of them, um, minus Braun, winding up somewhere else. I could see Braun going back to Vince later. So what do you think? Who's really valuable on, the, on this list? Where is their best fit? Who should AEW go after and who should they pass on? Do you think t uh, companies like NWA or MLW could get some bigger renown by signing somebody? Do you think an Impact or Ring of Honor scoops a few of these people up to make a difference? Maybe New Japan. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like this wrestling content, let me know if you would like to see some more of it. Tell me in the comments below where these talents go and who else you would like to see get a change of scenery in 2021. Take care, wrestling fans. See you soon.